Now, from Into Tomorrow, this is an ITTV special report. Intel believes in think big, make small. Of course, it's all about chip technology and the smaller stuff and, and more power and all kinds of neat things. Well, they're doing just that with their next generation of processors, as usual. Our next guest is the public relations manager with Intel, Dan Snyder. Always a pleasure to have you back, Dan. How are you? Great. Good. A lot of fun things happening here at IDF this year, and so much that we want to make sure and talk about some of the things we've yet to cover uh, right. with some of the many guests. Uh, for example, uh, Intel Haswell. Now, this is something right. that, among other things, is going to provide 10 days of connected standby. I mean, that's not even fathomable at this point with other yeah. stuff we use. So that's pretty awesome. So Haswell is a top secret project we've been working on for years. Uh oh, I just it let it is, out. <laughs> we let it out. Of the, we let the cat out of the bag this week. So yeah. it's a, it's a middle secret now. Um, it is going to be coming out in 2013. So we gave a very early sneak peek at some of the details. Yeah. A 20x reduction in standby power. So wow. that means basically when you're in your notebook and you go into standby or whatever. You can, you know, just run for, like you said, 10 days. Yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable what you could do with it. And then it just wakes up right away, and you continue where you left off. And, yep. and it's just awesome to be able to do that. One of the things, too, in Paul Altolini's uh, keynote the other day is he, he, he was showing a uh, 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 chip running on oh, just a one little solar, a postage, postage stamp, stamp size, size solar, solar panel. Yeah, and it yeah. Was, I mean, this is, again, to show, not that we'd be doing that, but the, the idea being uh, that these things are taking so much less power than ever before. Right. And, and yet doing so much more. Right. This has basically been our MO for the last five, ten years since, remember Centrino? Sure. That was all about getting that ultra low power into a notebook. Then something like the MacBook Air comes along, right, where we work with them to do an ultra teeny tiny version of our processor yeah. with ultra low power. And look how much a MacBook Air sells like hotcakes, oh, right? Oh, God, People yeah. People love it. And I see you got some pretty nice, sleek systems up here. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, you get your tablet here, which is people love. But you need that very low power, but high performance. So it... People a lot of times mix up power and performance. We want low power, so yeah. your devices last and last and last. Another uh, big batch of buzz, if you will, is about Ivy Bridge here at IDF this year. So let's right. talk a little bit more about Ivy Bridge uh, from a consumer standpoint. <clears throat> what is sure. it, and what does it mean to us? So today we have our core i3, i5, i7 mm -hmm. that you have in your notebooks and your desktops out there, out at Best Buy and everything. That was our code name, Sandy Bridge Generation. Ivy Bridge is next generation after Sandy Bridge, so it'll be our third generation core family. So it'll still be core i3, i5, i7, okay. but there's a lot of design tweaks, and the big thing is it's on a shrunk process. So the transistors are even smaller than Sandy Bridge. Now this is uh, the 22 nanometer exactly. technology? Exactly, so these are 22 nanometer transistors. That means you can fit more transistors, lower power, all that stuff. So that's kind of how Moore's Law works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when will Ivy Bridge uh, product be available? You'll see it in the first half of next year. Okay. Well, just after the holidays, but something right. else to, to celebrate <laughs> early, exactly. early in the next year. So you'll probably see some demos at CES. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have a you know, big presence at CES every year. It'll be our 17th year. So. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we can talk more of that about it, too. Yeah. Oh, good. We'll look forward to that. Uh, would Windows 8 be something that will likely be running on Ivy Bridge? Oh, absolutely. And we work with Microsoft, obviously. They're one of our top key software partners. Yeah. So we work with them real closely on really development of everything they do. You yeah. know, we have engineers literally on site in, in the Microsoft offices working to make sure that Windows 8 runs great on Intel products. Like, the line. Uh, and things like, like the uh, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, whatever, and, absolutely. Yeah. And what? the nice thing with Windows 8 is there's this build conference going on down in uh, South, Southern California right now in Anaheim where they're talking about Windows 8, and they're really revamping the touch capabilities because people are realizing tablets and touch screens are really taking off. And something like a Windows 7 is designed to continually wait for a double click of a mouse. Yeah. Right? When we're using a mouse, you're going to double click. So it has a built-in waiting for that second click. But on touch screens, you don't want that to slow the system down. True. So they got to re-engineer it a bit so it's fast and responsive. Yeah. So that's just one of many things that we're going to notice a difference with Windows 8. Exactly. Uh, other things that are popping out to you so far that, that you guys are, are looking at or, or anxious they, for? Our engineers say they're just working on tons, everything from the um, threading, how it uses the processor cores, yeah. because you know we have so many cores these days, six yeah, oh cores, yeah. 12 threads. And not to, nearly uh, enough cores yet, right? It's never <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> exactly. Which, which brings me to the high-end desktops as well. Six right. cores, 12 threads. 
times. Right. I mean, we're talking about the ability to just do anything you need to do. Your guys here doing the video editing would love that. They'd have that for breakfast. You oh, know, yeah. uh, their software apps, yeah. Mm, or big time gamers, maybe, or right. anybody who's right. creative at all. 3D and, and, gaming, video, audio, yeah. Uh, other uh, other stuff that we didn't talk about that I said we need to talk about with you well, real we quick. We talked about the Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, yeah. We're oh, in good shape. That's we're, good. we're good. More cool stuff always coming out of the Intel Developer Forum. And uh, we thank you for helping get some good guests and helping uh, us to talk about all sorts of neat things happening. The Tech Showcase here this year is also yes. killer. Yep. A lot of companies doing some really neat stuff, and it's all about networking as well. Yep, absolutely. A whole lot of that. Dan Snyder, PR manager with Intel. Of course, intel.com for more. We'll link you there, uh, not only to Dan's site, but to all of our guest sites here at IDF. We're back with more from the Intel Developer Forum in San Francisco. I'm Dave Graveline. You're tuned into tomorrow, intotomorrow.com for all the videos as well here on the Advanced Media Network. We'll